Hello, this is a tutorial on how to work with a second app, uh, activity in a Java, uh, or pardon me, an Android application. So this is carrying on from where the previous uh, demo left off. We've got a activity that has a single button on it, which I can show you over here running. The single button, when you click the button, it displays a toast message. So what I've already got is some code that sets up the button. Here we call the setup message button and then I actually go through find the button and set up the on click listener to put up a toast. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a second activity. We're going to make this button click, switch to the second activity, and we'll see how we can get back from the previous the second activity back to the first. So first let's create the other activity. So what I can do is I can go to here my layout on the left. The first thing I need to do is actually create a new uh, layout. So I go new and under other I can select Android and there should be here an Android activity. New Android activity. Uh, blank one's fine for me. I'll give it a name. Let's call it second activity. It's going to be in the current project and I'll click finish. Now this does a lot for me actually. You'll note here on the left I now have an activity underscore second. Apparently I misspelt it, but that's fine. And then up here we have the second activity dot Java, also suitably misspelled. Now it's given me down here the uh, activity, the second activity, and it's allowing me to do anything I like with it. So let's just change the text here. So go on to the right hand side, I will select, having selected the um, text box, and I'll just switch the text here to be, eh, let's say, on second activity. Now, of course, this doesn't put it in the strings.xml, but we saw how to do that before. Okay, now, of course, if I run my application, nothing will have changed. Why? Because the first activity is still being displayed. So we'll see here it closes it, it relaunches it, and it'll show exactly as before. The second activity is not linked. So I need to somehow link it to do that. So going into my Java, of course nothing needs to be changed in the second activity at the moment. I want to look at the main activity, the first one. So when I call this button, we saw before that this is the code that's executed when you click on the button, I need to do something to trigger to launch the second activity. So what that that code is going to look like is we're going to call start activity. Now start activity is a method defined inside of act the activity class which we have inherited from which is why we have access to it. We can see here that there are a few different ways that we can launch it and generally we're going to switch activities using an intent. So for an intent we have to create the new, act new intent and then I need to give it two things. The first one is going to be this activity, effectively, and the next one is the other activity. So let's figure that out. So this activity, I actually need to give it the object for the current activity. So again, I can't use this because this refers to the button that I'm in. I am currently in an anonymous uh, class. So I can't use this, but what I can do is the same trick I used before for the toast. I can say I want main activity which is my parent class. We see up here the main activity. So I say my parent class, the this instant for that. The only way this work, reason this works is because I'm currently inside of that class. Now here, for the other thing, the class I wish to launch, I have to specify the class of uh, the second activity. So second, and just to get all the typos in there, I'll complete that as well. And then I can't just take the class name, I actually need to say class because it's expecting the class. Now it's going to complain because I don't yet import that. Once I import the element there, it's going to be happy and take that. So what's going on? Well, now when we call it this, uh, make the callback here for the button, we're going to uh, call start activity, passing in the intent. Again, intents are how Android uh, launches new activities, knows what to launch. What do I want to launch? I want to launch the second activities class and from the first one. So I'll hit Control F11, that'll uh, restart it in my simulator, and it'll relaunch. I am using uh, Java, or Android 2.3.3 because it runs faster on my machine than Android 4.2. So now when I click Display Message, I get the toast, 
and you'll note that it switched to the second activity. I can go back by clicking the back button on the UI and it takes me back here. If I click the back button again it closes the application. And that's an important feature. So let's rerun it again. I always want to make sure that I am maintaining the correct what's known as the activity stack. So the launchers, the original part on the original element on the stack, when I launch a new activity, it goes on top on the stack. It's pushed onto the stack. Then when I switch to another activity, it pushes a second activity onto the stack. If I go back, it pops the current activity off of the stack, top of the stack and shows the next one in line. So here we're on the second one, and I can go back to the first. And out. Now let's actually add a button on the second activity. So I'll go into my XML. We saw how to do this before, so I'll do it reasonably quickly. I want a new button, so I select the button here. Let's give it a name, btn on second. Sounds good. I'll go back in, select the button, and the text is click for main activity. So I want to edit what that's going to do. I go back into my uh, Java code. Again, we need to do the make of the button. I can sort of simplify this by copying and pasting. It's got the template of the code that we already want. So I'll go back to my first activity, copy the code into my second activity's Java. I need to call it, so set up. And here I'll put in the message button. Now I'm a stickler for names of things, and well, of course, after our copy and paste, the first thing we really need to do is clean up some of our uh, code here. Anytime you copy and paste, make sure you do a full check of your code. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come through here, of course, to get the right IDs, I need to save all, otherwise it might not compile my IDs. Now that I've compiled the IDs, I don't want the display, I want the button for on second, which is button I'm currently working with. I want to get that button. I'm going to then do this override. You clicked it. Let's change the text. You clicked it on second screen. And then what do I'm going to do? Well, I don't want to do that. I'm going to comment this out because we don't want to launch the previous activity. We don't want to launch the main. What I want to do is I want to finish the current activity. I want to stop the activity and say we're leaving, we're done, go back to the previous activity on the stack. So the way I do that is I simply call finish. Finish is a method defined in the activity base class. Now a few things here would uh, annoy me about the code. First off, this isn't a message button anymore, so I'm going to control alt, or pardon me, alt shift R and I'm going to rename this. So let's name this as setup navigation. Navigation button. And it renames it in both places. Now we don't have this, it's not going to be the message button. I'm just going to rename this to button. Shorten it down, we don't need to be too descriptive at this point. It's pretty obvious from where we're at. Okay, so now we've got the code here to set up the second button, and when we click it, it's going to execute the finish method. So my second activity can now effectively end itself. Hit Control F11 to rerun. It should kick me back onto the first activity which I can then click a button and move on. Let's see what happens. First activity transitions to the second activity. When I click this, we're done, it's finished, and it returns to the first activity. Again, putting up my toast, and the toast carries through. Now I want to show you what could have happened. That's the right way to do it, and I'll just demo one thing. If I click the back button, I now finish the application. Why? Because when I made it to the second activity, it ended itself. A common idea is, rather than me executing finish in my second activity, what if I were to actually call the first activity? So it's called main activity. So I could have my second activity execute an intent to run a new copy of the main activity. Let's see what that does. So going back into here, It'll load up again onto the first activity. I click display message. We're now onto the second activity. I click and it now has launched back to the first, back to the second, back to the first. And so this looks like we've just done the same thing as before. Except what happens when I click the back button? 
I'll click it. So I'm on the second. I made it to the first. That's good. Now we expect to get to the launcher. I click it. I go back to the second. Back to the first. I'm working my way off the stack. My code has been pushing a whole bunch of activities onto the stack that I just had to work my way back through. So whenever I want to go backwards, whenever I'm done, I want to call finish that ends the activity rather than trying to launch the next place. It's sort of like if you think of a Java program and the main and a subroutine called, say, foo. The main code calls foo. Foo does not then call main. Foo simply de-executes a return. So I can kind of type that out here. You might have main, and of course I'm not typing in all the details. If I have another one called foo, main might call foo. Now foo would not call main. If this happened, of course we get an infinite loop. What foo does is foo returns. This is effectively the activity version of finish. So I'll get that out here, because it's not really job, not really Android code. Okay, so that concludes what I want to discuss here. We've created a button. We've seen how we can link that button to the finish uh, method, which then executes and closes the application. We've seen how we can actually have the two, and we saw why it's important to not have a start activity that links back to the first. Of course, this activity could have called something else, which could have called something else, but it's critical to make sure you always back off the stack when you're leaving the activities.